Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 review stream. Uh, apologies for the delay in uploading uh, videos. I've been doing a little bit of traveling, trying to get in some of those last minute coasters for the year. More on that later, hopefully. But uh, we're going to jump back into uh, some RCT2 reviews uh, as I'm getting rather far behind on my list of new releases I need to catch up on. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is not so much new anymore, but uh, it's certainly interesting. Um, so this is a collaborative uh, park by uh, Liam and Foss, uh, mostly, although Impulse and MK98 also uh, did a little bit of work on various bits and pieces. So the entire thing is a nine-map project called Regio Helderland. And that's the region, this Dutch region, in which these two different parks, one by Foss and one by Liam, are uh, situated. So there's nine total maps, and some of them have multiple iterations. And then both of the parks have multiple iterations, too. Uh, I really like these year-by-year -year parks. They're some of my favorite to see in the game. And I really like the sort of classic, simple style uh, that they've gone with. Uh, so I think you're really going to like these, these projects, and uh, hopefully you'll... Spend some time enjoying them. Now, I'm not going to look at all the maps around the um, the parks themselves, um, just because that's going to make for a really long video. Um, so I'm going to leave those for you guys to discover on your own. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's take a look at this corner one at least, just to kind of set the stage. Um, this is kind of a really neat idea. They've taken a lot of the in-game scenery pieces and have. Um, uh, merge them together and kind of zero clearance in, in different ways and then used other various scenery pieces to um, uh, to really make a cool town uh, to like kind of cityscape area um, with a lot of different stuff um, so you have all these different um, uh, houses and apartment blocks and flats um, throughout with you know interesting little backyards and parking lots and roadways and all sorts of things like that. I mean, there's just a lot to see here from you know, urban areas to farmland to railroads and roads and everything else in between. There's campgrounds like you see here. Love these little um, <clears throat> uh, camp trailers, the caravans, and then the uh, other little tents and things like that. I mean, there's just a lot to see, a lot of little details, and uh, it's really kind of makes for a pleasant experience to run around. I love these sunken... Um, statues here uh, for this pasture uh, that's really really cool um, but let's go ahead and jump into uh, the parks and let us take a look at uh, some of these so uh, first things first we are going to look at um, Foss's Park uh, which is um, uh, Slot Swafuhuva which um, Thankfully, he uh, did give me the pronunciation for that, and I'm sure I still butchered it. But we're gonna we're gonna go with it. I'm not gonna try any of the Dutch ride names in here because it's just gonna end up poorly. So, anyway, um, this is a small little park. This one is from 1990, uh, I believe, or 1980. Uh, actually, it should say so in here, 1990. So this is the original uh, little park, and it's great. It's just a tiny little a little park with this uh, sort of unpaved uh, parking area and this great entry into the uh, castle here. So I assume this is the uh, Watslafelhuva um, here. Um, and I really love the setting out on the water. Uh, this great front plaza with the fountain in the middle, a couple of statues on the side, some pretty nice uh, landscaping here. And you have your little ticket area and your entry into the park. Now the park itself is is pretty simple, but there are still three coasters. Uh, there's also this nice little tram that takes you into the park and back again, and then a couple of other little rides uh, throughout. So you've got the um, teacups here, and you've got the uh, uh, oh, uh, tilt a whirl there also, and just little theming throughout, like the little mushrooms, the mine scenery, and things like that. Um, so let's take a look at the coasters. Uh, here we have a wild mouse, uh, just a standard sort of steel wild mouse. Um, a little more compact than maybe your standard kind of realistic ones. And I think that, that says to this whole um, 
park build as a whole across both of uh, Liam and Foss's park. It's sort of like a semi-realistic design, so like we're not getting into like the ultra-realistic micro-detailing. Uh, we're not getting into, at least in Foss's park here, we're not getting into like transfer tracks and things like that, but it's done in a kind of really tasteful, simplistic, realistic style that I really enjoy, to be honest. Um, I think it's a really nice change from kind of the, the stuff that we, we see a lot more of now, which, I mean, is great in its own right, but this is still just pleasant, I would say. Um, so a nice little station here, a little kind of castle a uh, bit with the um, knights on top, and uh, <clears throat> just a good little simple layout, and um, a lot of guests here in the standard RCTQs, which I also appreciate. And then on the uh, other side here, we've got this corkscrew coaster. So this is sort of uh, reminiscent of, uh, say, Efteling's uh, Python. Um, but nice little uh, double loop, uh, big helix here, and then uh, two right-hand corkscrews uh, and into the brakes here. Um, again, really pleasant. I like the um, old-school supporting, almost uh, Pro Tour 2 era uh, supports. And then just uh, also like the flags and things like that on the lift hill. I think that's a very nice, nice touch throughout. So uh, good to watch this go. I also love the double layering here with the uh, brick archways and then the glass behind it gives a nice, uh, a nice kind of simple design to it. And there is custom scenery in here, not very much, but there's enough um, to really add some variety to it without um, becoming too much... Um, focused on custom, so you still have that sort of spirit of the original game uh, here. And then over here we have the uh, wooden coaster, which kind of feels a little bit to me like uh, Wallaby's Robin Hood, um, before it was turned into uh, Untamed the RMC. Uh, this is a nice little wooden coaster, mostly on the diagonal, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, pretty small, pretty simple, but um, I like it. I think it's, uh, it's a good fitting ride for this size park. Um, I mean, this is an awfully small park for having three coasters, but I think they all fit really well, and it, it feels kind of right for for the size, and then also just the little attractions throughout, like this uh, cluster over here with the swinging ship and the swings and everything else. Um, so, very nice, but let's see what happens when we forward um, quite a while. Let's forward uh, nearly uh, 28 years to uh, 2018. And uh, 2018 is where we find uh, this park once again. You know, see, we still have the original bits here, but uh, we've expanded somewhat. Uh, the tram is now long gone, and our parking lot has expanded, still uh, unpaved, but I, I kind of like that touch. It feels very European. Uh, but we have this great turnaround out here with this super huge uh, flower bed um, with uh, various colors. Um, I like that, especially in in the game just seeing really large um, kind of flower beds and everything using the color really well. Um, so this whole um, uh, train goes all the way around the park but let's pull back and you can see we've expanded pretty substantially since our um, first look um, many years ago. Uh, <clears throat> now we've got a full-fledged main street here on the front. These teacups still exist and um, you can see a lot more architecture throughout. Um, over here we still have our uh, corkscrew coaster, but sadly the wild mouse has been lost to us, as has the wooden coaster. Um, but, you know, progress is progress, so uh, we kind of take it as we come. Um, there's a lot of great stuff to see kinda, as you go through these areas, a lot of these nice little garden spaces. I love this green space here with the various trees, uh, the little play area here, and then all the... Uh, little uh, tiny kind of seat walls with the uh, picnic tables throughout. So let's jump in as we go around the various park and let's pick up these as they're dropping off right now. So this is a, a racing dueling uh, GCI-ish hybrid. Um, so I'm gonna assume that this is a GCI. But it uh, looks great. Looks really good. It has a nice kind of little flowing layout almost and they split apart towards the end but then uh, yellow train here as a helix as purple train catches up and they finish side by side. So uh, really cool, uh, kind of has a um, nice uh, detailed little station here, sort of castle-y almost. Um, very nice, you got the flag still on the lift hill uh, also. 
Uh, coming kind of inside the uh, wooden coaster here, we have this great little fountain, and then uh, this, um, uh, I assume is a madhouse uh, themed ride, or a madhouse type ride that's nicely themed there in the middle. You can see our train cutting through. Let's jump back over to this side and uh, take a look at the next attraction here. So um, this one looks to be a, a mock water coaster uh, or a water coaster of, of sorts. So we've got this great kind of um, spiral helix that kind of undulates throughout and a big drop here into the splashdown. Really, really liking this, um, this wall on the side uh, with the various statues throughout and kind of the way that that the the lake edge sort of varies throughout the whole thing. I really like that look. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, and a pretty cool interaction, too, over the top of the pathways with this, um, uh, with the coaster itself. Nice little splash pad detail for the kids uh, right next to the um, uh, top spin right here that's got some water elements also. So over on this side, we have the... Um, a big Intamin um, hyper coaster that's uh, similar to Expedition G-Force as far as layout goes. Uh, this um, station is sort of reminiscent, reminiscent of uh, Flying Dutchman at Efteling to me. Um, kind of this whole area has that feel to it. Unfortunately, we got stopped by the block brakes here, but we'll go in just a second on the cable lift. So that very steep first drop, and then great floater airtime hill here. And this uh, sort of double out and back layout with this uh, helix bit in the middle. Uh, again, feels very Expedition G-Force-like, which is certainly not a bad thing. Uh, definitely like the idea behind that one. So good choice here. Again, sticking with those old school Pro Tour 2 type supports. Um, really kind of nice to see the sort of classic nature of that. So we'll transition out of this uh, pirate type area and into more of a uh, Roman um, area here with uh, these canoes and a nice little barricade on that side. Um, really like the uh, 3D theater here as far as the way that it kind of bumps up through the building like a dome. I think that's very cool. Uh, and then some of the shops and little details in here. Uh, and then we have a rapids ride on this side, which is themed incredibly well. Um, so uh, you've got your station here, which has all the columns and things you would expect, and then uh, a nice little figure eight layout, including this bridge over top, which I really like, um, just for a little bit more interaction. Uh, we're not... Uh, uh, rapid rides tend to be a little bit simplistic sometimes, or way over the top, and I think this one kind of nails it as far as the proper scope for a rapid ride of a park this size. I think it looks really good and, and fits well. Over here is a really cool ride, in my opinion. This is a uh, big dark ride, um, so this has uh, the um, <clears throat> the boats, uh, the river rafts that go through, and there's a couple of different cutaway scenes here, so we can see there's a little bit of an Egypt one here. Uh, this is uh, sort of almost, looks like Middle Ages, and um, sort of swampy almost. Uh, and then we have our Roman area here, and... Um, uh, transitioning through to uh, some of these other parts and pieces. So I really like how, like, for example, the Colosseum here sits inside this big turn, um, really covering a lot of the, the theming aspects um, integrated with the ride really well. Uh, it's a giant building, um, really giant, but it's hidden well, and it looks like you kind of got this expansion almost on the side, but uh, you got the facade on the front here that really only is where the facade counts, but where the guests are going to see it. And then the rest of it uh, is more simplistic, which is realistic and a good a good way to look at that. Let's keep on going over this way, and we have a uh, nice little campground on this side, a little swimming pool and a clubhouse sort of thing. Um, and then we are going to actually skip to this side because I want to finish with some of the coasters. But let's go back to the front of the park uh, where our new main street is and then kind of cross over to... Uh, this side where we have just a really great selection of facades too. Um, I like the way that these sort of uh, sit on the diagonal. So uh, you really get a lot of facade variation throughout that. Uh, then we have this great building over here. On the one side we have this big slide uh, coming down. And then inside we have a nice dark ride. Um, and uh, no cutaway on this one. Um, but 
really cool to see a uh, pretty impressive structure on the front and then the show building out back that still has a little bit of theming on it or those glimpses that you can get from the front of the park or from the uh, uh, the slide. Over on this side we have a pretty cool area here. This is the prehistoric area with uh, Big Bang, our uh, launch tower coming out of the volcano. Uh, cool custom top on this. Uh, nice little show area here with the stage and then the um, barrel seating. Kind of cool. And then a uh, cool little mock um, uh, spinning coaster. Um, kind of missing out on some of the block breaks and things like that. But like I said earlier, this isn't necessarily full heavy realism focused. Uh, but it is a nice realistic-ish layout for one of these kind of rides. I think it, it looks, looks nice overall. Uh, so definitely worth... Um, uh, worth a good look uh, and looks like it'd be a fun ride in uh, person. And then last we'll uh, we'll jump over here to uh, this side. So this is uh, Baron 98 which uh, and again we're having our uh, Efteling theme going on here. Uh, so we have this sort of mine theme to the whole thing and the ride itself is sort of a mixture of uh, Baron 98 from Efteling and then uh, almost feels a little bit like um, Kraken from uh, Hyde Park. Um, but either way, has a nice uh, vertical drop into that Immelman, a roll up top here, uh, and then a final helix and into the brakes. Oh, but pretty nice theming uh, throughout this, and then also these great uh, little arches from across the whole thing. So it's pretty neat to see how that park can start small. I mean, I figure... The original park was sort of in just this general vicinity and that was about it and now we're um, it was quadruple or five times the size of it with a lot more development a lot of cool stuff to see and um, a lot of great rides so that is it for uh these two parks built by foss uh, so what we're going to do now is jump over to liam's park and we're going to go back to uh 1980 so um <clears throat> this is uh de Badrijes. Uh, which I know I'm saying wrong, so you can laugh at me, but regardless, uh, we have our uh, edge of our city right here, uh, and then we have the um, the park itself. So let's first kind of take a look at uh, <clears throat> the city, which is a lot of kind of similar to what we saw earlier in uh, the very first map that I had pulled up when uh, we started the, the video. Uh, but another great selection of um, standard game buildings, uh, merged together with some other scenery items. Uh, this is a great little gas station here. Um, and then uh, just all sorts of little commercial, residential, a couple industrial, uh, just very nicely put together uh, buildings. And then we have this large area here, uh, which is sort of reminds me of um, uh, Fossa's Park with this kind of center um, fortress of sorts out in the water. I love this... Um, Structure that's got a little bit of curve to it uh, out here in the water, um, but let's uh, let's start in. Uh, here's our nice little understated entrance and our <clears throat> parking lot here that has not been fully cleared of trees, but uh, a good little start. So we do have a train circling all the way around the park, and um, some nice little theming bits. This uh, sort of themed up almost Roman-looking fountain uh, using the grave markers uh, from the original game scenery, so very nicely done there. Uh, a pretty cool theme here, nice, um, <clears throat> sort of stately, I guess would be the, the best description of it um, for the building on that side. And then over here there's a um, cable car that goes up and across the whole area, has a turn up top, um, and then a couple of little play areas and things like that alongside the garden, um, nice center lake that we have our good pathway all around, nice seating areas within um, uh, kind of these garden spaces, uh, so all very nicely landscaped and everything, um, but nothing in the way of rides. So uh, we have our little restaurant here also. Um, so it's going to take uh, until our next park. Uh, our next park is from 1990, so in 10 short years uh, we can see some movement here. So now we've got a lot more cars in the parking lot, and uh, we have our first coaster here right off the bat. So I love this one because this is a copy of the Schwarzkopf uh, Shuttle Loop, which currently runs at Selva Magica in uh, Mexico, um, but is a one-of-a-kind coaster. Uh, so this is Hitkanen, uh, 
and is a pretty good recreation of the real thing. Uh, kind of nice simple design, so the loop does go around the station like this. A nice teal color to the whole thing, and um, cool station uh, throughout, and a lot of viewing area around the uh, uh, the ride track itself. As we continue around, we can see some more development here. So this whole section of uh, of park before has now been expanded out. We have this great uh, car ride here that goes through uh, all these various scenery pieces, including these um, little hut scenery and uh, little mushrooms and this big statue and just all sorts of nice uh, little themed elements. And uh, we'll continue on this uh, area, change our path to uh, the brick. Over here we have a nice little uh, swinging ship, carousel, swinger ride here, and then always a favorite uh, is the um, log flume here. So pretty simple understated station and a nice little layout, but I, I like it, that it's nice and believable. You have your short lift first, cross underneath the track and then back over the track. A little mini drop here over top of the small lake more meandering and then we have our big lift big drop nice covered uh top of the um, drop here and then the whole ride is raised up off of the lake which i feel like is a pretty good realistic move for it so jumping back over we still get back to our same uh cable car that was there before all sorts of that same scenery but we expanded over on this side too and now we have this uh nice little um little zero coaster here uh, kids ride and then another play area kind of looks like the play area got moved over to here uh, with our teacups and everything and then back in here we have a dark ride so this is a pretty cool looking building here and then we have the the whole show building uh, on the back side that opens back to the server as our little um, back of house here to the uh, main road that goes into the village uh, the village itself but <clears throat> Definitely a great expansion for uh, 10 years in park timeline. Uh, added a couple of solid rides here. Uh, but we're going to take another jump here. We're going to jump a little further this time. We're going to go from 1990 to 2004. And in that number of years, we uh, can see right off the bat that we repainted the uh, coaster up here, but it's still there. So that's good news. And uh, the parking lot here is getting a little bit more finished. We have this great walk all the way from the... Uh, front of the uh, the park so they get this new kind of tolls entrance uh, on the front side here and just uh, a nice kind of quality uh, entry process and then we zoom out we can see there's uh, quite a lot more that was added uh, to this park so let's take a look we're going to go left this time to start uh, first things first we get up to this rapids ride which has a heck of a lot of just kind of rock work elements here uh, so this is casba um, through this whole Arabian-esque type theme. Uh, works on a couple of different levels, not uh, too much as far as directional change or elevation change goes, but I don't think you need it. Uh, so this looks pretty nice um, and the, an interesting way to attempt the kind of rock work elements there. Um, I think you can kind of get what it is uh, pretty easily. Uh, a lot of little rides and things here uh, throughout. You can see that fountain from the early days is still there. Um, but then there's all sorts of added things. Now we get to more of the simplistic sort of amusement park type stuff, like these little game stalls here, simple simple bits, and that um, play area is still there. We've also repainted the Zero Coaster here, so that's a definite um, improvement. They're repainting the rides, but still keeping all those kind of originals uh, within the space. And we have uh, a new Wild Mouse on this side, so this is a pretty good... Uh, wild Mouse Attempt. This is a pretty large, large one, almost based off of um, uh, the spinning Wild Mouse by, by Riverton. Uh, but a nice look here and a uh, nice bright yellow. Uh, and it's sort of getting into more of those bright colors versus the more rustic, muted colors from sort of the early park. Our Dark Ride still sitting there as it was before. And. Uh, this little restaurant has since been added on to, and there's more seating, a lot more to see kind of overall. On the back side here, this pathway and the uh, train station and everything is still there, but I uh, have this really great Ferris wheel with uh, excellent looking garden in the front, and then the uh, train which comes right in front of that um, to uh, give it a sort of excellent little place setting. And right across the train tracks here is a wooden coaster. 
This wooden coaster is simply titled Wolf, um, but it has a pretty cool layout actually. Um, and it reminds me of almost like a Din wooden coaster or, or just um, almost in-house made in some sense, but it sort of reminds me of a 19... A late 1980s type uh, type wooden coaster, perhaps, but I really like the uh, sort of figure eight elements here with the hills that are on the diagonal and the turnarounds and everything, with mostly flat uh, corners, actually all flat corners. Now that we're looking at it, um, and then the straight drops. But I think it's a nice design, nice simple uh, layout, but uh, has a lot of interest to it beyond you know just your standard say oval out and back or double out and back layout so pretty cool uh to see i like that uh a lot and then just also that the theming is kind of up and, or getting up throughout uh but we're still sticking with the the old style or the original in-game queue lines and things like that so always like to see that style overall um continuing over we've got a, our uh little shops here um the Log flume and everything still lives over there, but uh, sort of more central to the park. We're getting some expansion here. Um, nice uh, garden maze. The uh, car ride has since been um, dealt with a little bit and reach and changed around into a much shorter car ride. Unfortunately, not as quite as nice as far as theming goes. I don't think uh, in favor of this monster coaster, which we'll get to in just a minute. Um, but you can kind of see the rest of this uh, this area is pretty well the same and where the pathway changes we move over and you can see the, the larger path uh, or path change uh, as we jump into this little seating area uh, has these great little trellis covers over top of them um, but this uh, coaster can't be ignored and uh, take a look at this guy so this is a uh, pretty substantial Intamin coaster uh, so this has a number of inversions you've got uh, this great big drop to start with a Norwegian loop uh, right out of the gates into a Cobra roll to follow this guy around using the standard train so they don't quite have all the sprites but I think that's okay um, through that Cobra roll over an airtime hill turn around and into a loop here followed by a triple barrel roll so I like that this uh, Intamin is sort of in the style of Colossus at Thor Park and other uh, kind of really heavy inversion uh, focused layouts um, this feels like something a small park like this would get sort of like how holiday park had exposition g-force this seems like something that this park would have saved up for for a while and gotten this like monster coaster to put them on the map that's you know bigger than anything else they have which it's kind of fun when you zoom out you can see you know this just dominates everything in not only color but in size and scope and just how much it takes up as far as the map goes your eye is immediately drawn to it so um nice area here just with the uh sort of roman-esque or uh, uh ancient theme to it with the uh the wheel here also uh, and a pretty themed queue line over top of the ride underneath of the ride as the statue on the other side and then some great support work uh, across the whole thing so huge coaster and definitely um of a sign of things to come because what we'll do is go to the last of the maps so this is 2017 edition of this park and uh, you can still see even though we started zoomed out that uh, that big intimate coaster is so sort of the um, the winner of the whole thing as far as drawing your eye goes and, and just general focus but let's uh, let's take a zoom in spin around and kind of see how everything is uh, still looking rather similar here but some of the colors have changed and uh, we're just expanding and, and getting um, a nicer entrance and just a lot of uh, a lot of general improvements beyond the ride so I like that all the buildings are getting improved the pathways are getting improved but you still have you know some things that remain the same like the center area here like this great little fountain this center lake although now you have some swan boats through it so um, a great mix of existing things and refurbished things, but then also new products to add to the park. Uh, so there's a great uh, look at the uh, cannon once again that has some expanded pathway and um, new rides in the back here. So our uh, Rapids ride is where it is, but now we have a nice little Vacoma suspended coaster uh, over here, which I really love this layout. Um, 
kind of uh, looks like the uh, the Vacoma family suspended coasters, uh, kind of like uh, Orkinen at uh, Far Up Summerland, which was the first one of that type. So it's sort of low, fast, has a lot of helixes, and um, goes up and over the pathway, gives you a lot of nice uh, interaction with all the uh, guests and the different scenery items. I like how it goes right over top of this building here and then back underneath the uh, the bridge over on this side. So what, uh, what I like about uh, this expansion now is we've come across the road. So this road, which has been here from the beginning, is still there, but now we've jumped across and we have this... Uh, Area Sector X, which has a new coaster called Prototype. Um, kind of looks like it could be a um, be an Intamin prototype or a new Vacoma. Um, you know, either one really, but um, it's a cool layout, so we'll wait for it to go as we take a look at some other uh, bits and pieces here. So here's a pretty cool little office type uh, space, and uh, or looks sort of like an office type space, and then also has a bunch of um, uh, restaurants and um, all sorts of parts and pieces. There's also a uh, um, uh, ride in here called the Signal uh, Motion Simulator. So let's take a look at this. Great first drop underneath the pathway. Uh, super cool airtime there. Uh, speedy corners wrapping around to this big loop. And then I'm really liking this twisted airtime hill uh, through the uh, roll inversion and up and around this helix which interacts with the station, corkscrew, and then finally a turn into the brakes. Uh, so kind of a, a different look from a lot of the other stuff. Uh, these interesting custom supports, which are pretty cool. Uh, the station is pretty simple, pretty large, sort of a modern uh, approach, sort of space age looking uh, ride, especially with this sort of um, rocket satellite looking thing here in the middle. Um, definitely a cool a cool design overall and, and kind of neat to see that the road was kept and space over here was acquired and they've just moved across and started expanding uh, again uh, on the other side. There's also a nice little uh, observation tower here, UFO, just to sort of reinforce that theme overall. So on uh, back to the main park proper, we've got a lot of what we had in here before. Um, and you can see though that the train has gone and the train is now a, uh, a one or a shuttle back and forth. Um, so that station uh, has now been pulled out and has some additional theming in here with these great jumping fountains and things like that. There's like there's actual theming and kind of fun play area stuff through here. So here's like a little uh, pan for gold uh, type attraction, and you can see there's this um, uh, little. Uh, wagon here and the guests do hop up and go into that which is actually really clever it's a neat little little design so continuing along over on this side we get to another coaster so this one is a uh, little ride called marooned uh, into our area which has been reinforced a little bit as far as pirate theme goes so uh, no longer do we have our log flume it's actually a new log flume there on um, on the side, but let's take a look at the coaster first. It has a cool little pre-launch or pre-launch section, and then our little tiny launch here. So more of a family coaster. Um, we'll figure eight on this side through some theming, and then dropping underneath the queue line and interacting with that fountain, which is always great. I like a good interaction in that regards, and then. Um, break here and back into the station. Nice simple theme, but you can definitely tell it's that pirate-esque uh, look. Um, and like I said, the original log flume is gone now, unfortunately. I thought that was a nice look. It was a good classic ride, uh, replaced with sort of this giant splash type ride. Uh, only one drop, but it's got some theming now. Presumably there's a show scene or something in here. Uh, this also doubles as the entrance, uh, but the station itself has this great boat here, uh, which looks really cool. Our swings are still around, and uh, our swinging ship is also there, as well as the uh, scrambler ride. Uh, over here, uh, this whole area has been expanded out to a plaza now, and we've got this uh, rum shot, a uh, fun little uh, SNS tower on this side. And then continuing over, the uh, uh, big coaster here is still uh, in, so Orion is still doing its thing. 
uh, but we pushed out on the other side here to uh, a ride that I really like. So this is Aeronaut. Uh, it sort of has this uh, balloon cloud theme to it. Um, these sort of rudimentary cloud themed elements, which I, I really like. I think they just look super cool, uh, which uh, you know fits this sort of B and M flying coaster appeal. Um, Liam's favorite coaster is Air uh, at Alton Towers, so I can definitely see the appeal of this ride here. A little bit slow on the pacing, as you can see here, um, but it gets better uh, through this inversion and then diving down into uh, this little uh, section there before it comes up and into the brakes. Full cool station on this side. A lot of that queue is going to be inside over here. Uh, but we have these hot air balloons with among the clouds uh, throughout, and then a couple of the balloons up at the top of the lift hill, adding some more theming, uh, as well as some dining space in here, and then just a uh, really colorful, fun shopping area on that side. But, um, you know, really cool to see how the park expanded over the years. You can kind of back up and see what, what was a lot of just landscape and... Um, Trees is now a larger area. Um, you have all the original town here that's uh, kind of expanded and grown a little bit over the years as uh, the park has kind of grown with it. But it's really kind of filled out the area well just as it expanded around and uh, up to some of the existing roads. Um, it's cool here when you zoom out because you can really see this original park proper, which is more or less untouched. I mean, it's had some adjustments, of course, over the years, but you can really see how the park built itself outwards, and I think it says a lot to the park planning if you're starting with a, um, if you're building your own park ground up and you want it to seem realistic, I mean, consider this kind of design work where typically a park starts small and expands over time, and uh, this really shows how that happens. So big coasters are towards the edges, um, you've got sort of older architecture, older styles in the middle. Um, generally, it's a little more quaint, a little more relaxing. Um, and as you go along, things get larger and uh, improved over time. Um, I really like the repaints uh, between the years. I think that was a clever idea. And then just changing some little things here and there. Um, and it's, it's kind of clear that he thought through all the various little details as you go through it. But... Uh, that is it for uh, today's review. So that was um, six maps in total across two parks, and then we also looked at the first um, uh, the first village map. Like I said, this is part of a larger project across um, nine maps in general. So um, definitely download the the whole set, which I will link below, and uh, take a look at everything because there's really a lot to see here, and uh, you don't want to miss it because it's a really cool classic style. I think it's a, a fun design and it's ambitious, especially these days when it's, you know, enough of an effort just to finish one park, uh, much less this many. So, um, you know, congratulations to Foss and Liam, um, as well as uh, Impulse and MK98 just for helping out uh, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, Foss and Liam deserve a lot of credit for uh, sticking this through and finishing it out. Um, really nice to see this sort of classic feel uh, these days when we're seeing a lot of different stuff, really hyper-realistic or hyper-detailed uh, things. So this is something that I would love to see more of, love to see more year-by-year -year type projects. Uh, so if that's kind of your deal, then uh, go at it. I think you get a lot of good reception. So uh, anyway, until next time, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, as always, if you have things you'd like to see specifically or uh, requests that you'd uh, like to check out, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments or message me directly, um, but we'll be back soon with another one. Hope until next time, thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, have a great day.